morning. It is 10 o'clock on September 14th, and I will now call the Rural Telephone Service Company 2020 Annual Meeting to order. First of all, I want to welcome all of you, whether you're joining virtually or in one of our offices, to our annual meeting. As everybody knows, this year has been a little disrupted. Um, COVID-19 has completely disrupted our entire world in many ways. That is no exception for our annual meeting. We tried twice to have an in-person annual meeting, and unfortunately, we had to cancel both of those due to the fact that we wanted to keep our members and our staff and board safe. So now we are meeting in this virtual, virtual world. Um, to accommodate those that don't have internet connection, uh, we have opened up some of our offices, our office conference rooms, and um, some are attending um, <coughs> First, I'd like to um, introduce our board to you. Up on the screen is a picture of our board. Starting in the back left is our vice president, Ron Rogers. He's from Kensington. He represents Agra, Kensington, Athol, Gaylord, Lebanon, Aspen, Burr Oak, Burr Oak, Ionia, Weber, Republic, and Portland exchanges. Next to him is one of our newest board members, Kirk Johnson. He's from Waukini. He represents Joaquin, Victoria, Galatia, and Olmas. Next to him is another one of our newer board members, Daniel Schultz from Grainfield. He represents Grainfield, Gove, Collier, Quinter, Rexford, and Selvin exchanges. Next to him is Glenn Lambert. He is our assistant secretary from Zurich. He represents DeMar, Palco, Zuri, Natoma, Woodston, Edmund, Logan, Prairie View, Long Island, and Woodbrook. Directly below Glenn is our Secretary Treasurer, Janine Byers from Russell. She represents the Rush Russell Exchange. On her left is Don Highland from Downs, representing Alton, Osborne, and Downs. And finally, on the lower left is myself, Phyllis Weller, president from Hill City, representing Lenora Jennings, Hill City, and Moreland. And I'd like to take just a couple of minutes and explain how this is all going to work. Um, you all should have a chat button. Um, anytime that you want to ask a question, if you want to make a motion, if you want to second a motion, um, Please um, type that in the chat function. And if you want to go ahead and just get familiar with that and let us know where you're coming from, type in where you're at and we'd love to, to see that. Later on during the meeting, when you're asked to vote, a voting option will pop up on your screen and you can cast your vote by clicking yes or no, or you can um, hit the do it later button and then hit enter or submit. The vote will remain available for a short time under the polls tab if you hit the do it later button. Once that voting screen pops up, you must either cast your vote or click do it later to clear the screen. Anytime during the meeting, if you have any trouble um, with video or sound quality or did get disconnected, during the meeting, please hit refresh, or if you have to, close your web browser, browser and reopen the meeting from the link that you received via email. According to our bylaws, we need a quorum of the members to hold this meeting. Member eligibility was confirmed through the enrollment process when you signed up to attend the annual meeting. Only members were sent a link to log into the meeting. Today, as members logged in, and for those attending physically in our office conference rooms, we are able to record their attendance and confirm quorum. 
Checking the list, I have been informed that there is a quorum present. Therefore, I direct the secretary to annex the list of members registered to the minutes of this meeting. Our bylaws also state that the secretary certifies that the notice of the annual meeting was sent to members. In July, before we canceled the annual, me annual meeting for the second time, a notice was mailed to each member. Due to the pandemic situation and after consulting with our general counsel, we provided notice of the virtual annual meeting to members via electronic transmission. At this time, I would ask the secretary to read this certification. I, Janine Byers Long, do hereby certify that I am secretary of Rural Telephone Service Company, Inc. And that on August 27, 2020, official notice of the members meeting to be held virtually on September 14, 2020 at 10 a.m. was electronically transmitted to members of the cooperative in accordance with the bylaws of the cooperative. I further certify that on the date of the electronic notification of the official notice of the members meeting, there were 10,551 members in the cooperative. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and affixed the seal of the corporation this 27th day of August, 2020. Thank you, Janine. The minutes of the April 23rd, 2019 annual meeting will be read by the secretary, unless there is a motion to dispense with the reading and approve the minutes. In the chat function, we have asked if anybody would make a motion if so, please type motion in the chat. We have that motion. Do I have a second? Will somebody second the motion by typing second in the chat? We have that. So now I will ask everybody to cast their vote. On your screen, you will see the poll to vote. I will allow 15 seconds to cast your vote, and then the poll will close. Fifty-three to zero. Having allowed the fifteen seconds, the results of the vote are fifty-three members cast affirmative votes and zero cast negative votes. Therefore, the motion to dispense of the reading is approved. At this time, the secretary will read a few financial highlights as you view the audited financials on your screen. 2019 financials for Rural Telephone and its fully owned subsidiaries are shown on your screen. A few highlights are consolidated operating revenues, totaling 81 million and consolidated assets of 203 million. $898,000 in property taxes was paid and $9.4 million was invested in plant upgrades. Currently, there are 294 full-time and 20 part-time employees with an annual payroll of $20.4 million. And as of December 31st, 2019, there were 17,101 access lines, 10,600 video customers, and 25,971 broadband customers. If anyone has any questions regarding these financials, you can either leave us a message in the chat function, or you can call our office and speak to Mindy Beaker, who is our Director of Finance, Accounting and Billing. We will wait just a minute to see if there's any questions come in before moving on. Having no questions, the secretary will now read the nominating committee report. Nominating committee reports from March 6th of 2020. We, the undersigned nominating committee appointed by the directors of Rural Telephone Service Company, Inc., state that the following were unanimously nominated on March 6th, 2020, as candidates for the office of director of Rural Telephone Service Company, Inc. 
to serve for three years or until their successors shall have qualified. Said candidates st shall stand for election by the members of the company at the annual members meeting to be held April 17, 2020 at 10 a.m. at the former Lenora High School Gymnasium in Lenora, Kansas. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the annual meeting was rescheduled and canceled for July 17, then rescheduled virtually to be held September 14, 2020. Representing Zone 2 is Kirk Johnston, representing Wahini, Victoria, Galatia, and Almitz. And representing Zone 6, Ron Rogers, for Agra, Kensington, Abel, Gaylord, Lebanon, Esben, Burr Oak, Ionia, Weber, Republic, and Portland. Signed by Hardy Howard, Kim Moore, Mike Frappas, Brian Stockman, and David Hudson. Members of the nominating committee of Rural Telephone Service Company, Inc. as appointed at the Board of Directors meeting on January 30th, 2020. Thank you, Janine. You have heard the nominating committee reports and you can see Ron Rogers and Kirk Johnson on your screen. Mm -hmm. I will now let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about themselves. Hello, I'm uh, Kirk Johnson from Wahini. Uh, I've been a farmer and uh, uh, operator and owner of Shiloh Vineyard and Winery in Wahini. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Ron Rogers. I'm a full-time farmer up in uh, Smith County, Kensington, my hometown, and have been active and serving on this board for a number of years now. Uh, this is an extremely movable industry, and I would uh, like to be part of it again to be able to keep us on the cutting edge and keep us uh, at the very top of the services that we provide. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. According to our bylaws, nominations for director positions are made by a nominating committee or by the members through a petition process. As no petitions were received, I will now ask the members to make a motion and a second to accept the nominating committee report and elect Kirk Johnson, Zone 2, and Ron Rogers, Zone 6, for a three-year term. But I will not call for the final vote until after the CEO report. In the chat, we have asked for a motion and I have received that motion. I will now ask somebody for a second. And I have that second. As I said, we will not close this until after the CEO report. Um, So it will remain open until that point in time. Next, we have a bylaws um, revision that we'd like to talk to you about. And I'm going to turn it over to Jimmy Todd to have him discuss that with you. Good morning. As, as Phyllis mentioned, uh, this year we tried a couple of times to, to hold uh, in person uh, the membership meeting. And uh, due to circumstances, that was not possible. We realized that in our bylaws, we needed to make some adjustments so that in the future, we can continue to use the technology that's available uh, to provide you know, the, the annual meeting uh, of the membership uh, over multiple platforms. So part of the revisions that you've seen was included in your registration materials um, is focused specifically on allowing that virtual meeting and using electronic uh, means to communicate to the membership. There's also a couple of changes um, in the bylaws uh, that are recommended, which removes some archaic language. And so we included that. We give you now a, a chance to ask questions if you may have any with regards to the, the revisions. And if so, please uh, type them into the, the chat feature. I'd be happy to address any of the questions you may have. Doesn't look like we have any questions, so we'll move on to the member approval. Okay. According to our bylaws, these revisions require member approval. 
I will ask for a motion and a second to approve the bylaws. But again, I will not call for a final vote until after the CEO report to allow everyone more time to consider the revisions. In the chat, we have asked for a motion, of which I have. I will now ask for a second. We have a second. On your screen, you will see the poll to vote yes or no. You may cast your vote now, or the poll will remain open until the CEO report. If you want to vote later, then click do it later to clear your screen. At this time, I'll turn it over to Jimmy to, um, for his CEO general manager report. Thank you, Phyllis. So go we'll ahead to the next slide. So, as, as Bill has talked about, the pandemic has, has been a, a huge impact to our entire, you know, area. And, and our company is, is no different. Um, it's, it's something that nobody could plan for, nobody could expect. But at the same time, we need to continue being able to provide services. Uh, early on, we proactively communicated with the Department of Education as well as the Department of emergency management with the goal that we want to be able to help our local school districts and the students that may not have a broadband connection be able to finish their term. So we worked very closely with them. We also pledged, you know, through the FCC and through the, the KCC, which is our federal and uh, state regulatory agencies over our, the services we provide, that we would not disconnect folks during this time. If, their means for paying was impacted by COVID. So, you know, even though, you know, these moratoriums have, have expired, we continue to work with our, our members and our customers on payment arrangements to, to make sure that we can mitigate uh, disconnects um, during this time. Um, so, you know, the other piece to dealing with is, is ensuring that not only are you keeping your customers safe, you're keeping your team safe. Um, you know, we've made sure to follow uh, the recommendations made by KPHE, um, also our local health departments to make sure that uh, we were keeping our team as safe as possible, as well as our customers that we may deal with on a regular basis providing those services. We've uh, implemented social distancing use of PPE and to, you know, in certain times had to, had to close some of our retail store locations just because of, of the activities um, related to the pandemic. But as you know we were able to accommodate reopening those facilities we put you know additional safeguards in place. Um, the sneeze guards that you noticed if you've gone into any of our retail locations um, just to make sure that you know we provide you know that ability to keep our, our folks and our customers safe. Additional sanitation, additional cleaning, all of those things have, have been heightened. Um, and I will tell you, you know, when everybody was getting really concerned about being able to get access to PPE or Clorox wipes or cleaning materials, hand sanitizers, our warehouse staff did a fantastic job of making sure that we have what we need to continue providing services. You know, the reality is uh, telecommunications and broadband are considered uh, critical services as, as well as IT. And these are all, you know, the services that we provide to our customers. So it's critical that we were able to continue providing the services that we do while, you know, keeping our, our team safe. You know, I would say that as time has passed, we, we've gotten to a, a more informal uh, mode of operation, but you know, we still make sure that we have masks, we still make sure that uh, we utilize social distancing. We've implemented more uh, work at home flexibility than we've ever had in the past. You know, in the earlier stages of the pandemic uh, time frame, it was, it was kind of a requirement. Now we've learned that in many of tasks that we do, we can be more flexible with those arrangements. So, you know, we've implemented the tools to, to be able to do it, and we've allowed 
our work groups to figure out so what degree can be done remotely and what still needs to be in the office. So transitioning to the uh, 2020 uh, scholarship recipients. Uh, like many years in the past, Next Tech has, has uh, awarded 10 $1,000 uh, scholarships to graduating seniors. Now, on the next slide, you'll see uh, a list of, of our uh, recent graduates. Um, normally, we're having this meeting in April, and we're talking about our prospective graduates. Um, now, all of these young people have already graduated and moved on to the next level of their education. But uh, you know, we're we're excited to be able to be a part of their education, and, and uh, you know, we've got some some great kids that are represented on this slide. Another thing that we've done for many years is, is participate in the FRS uh, inventory. FRS is the Foundation for Rural Services, and it is um, an affiliate to NCCA, uh, which is our, our national organization for independent telecommunications and broadband providers. And in 2019, we were fortunate to, to send Haley Keller and Reagan Bales to Washington, D.C. Uh, to participate in this youth tour. Uh, Haley graduated from Palco High School. Her parents are Myron and Rachel Keller. Reagan is a senior this year at Osborne High School. His parents are Larry and Robin Bales. Um, we're going to show you uh, a video of their trip, and I hope you get as much enjoyment out of seeing um, their enthusiasm as we do. Hi, my name is Reagan Bales, and I attend Osborne High School. My name is Haley Keller and I attend Palco High School and together we are going to share our FRS U2 experience with you. Early in the morning we headed to the KC airport and said goodbye to Rachel Keller. We boarded our plane around 8.30 and headed to Ronald Reagan National Airport. Close to 11.30 we touched down and headed to baggage claim. I was alongside many other kids from Kansas and Missouri and I began to introduce myself to them and talk with them. We took a bus to our hotel, then played Uno and talked for hours with other people until everyone arrived. Next, I met my roommate from Minnesota named Madeline. We talked for hours about our lives, both equally intrigued. She could not believe how small my school was. After a quick breakfast the next morning, we boarded our charter buses and met our bus driver, Mr. Green. Through the crowded streets of DC, we made our way to Arlington National Cemetery. Inside this breathtaking place was over 400,000 tombstones. At the tomb, we watched the changing of the guard, a sacred routine in which one service member alternates places with another service member who has been keeping watch over the tomb for the last hour. Additionally, we viewed the eternal flame over the burial site of John F. Kennedy. Then we boarded the bus and headed to the National Mall, where I spent the majority of my time at the National Gallery of Art. There was a big blue rooster on the roof. Being a proud rooster myself, I had to get a picture with it. I also saw Genevieve da Vinci, Leonardo da Vinci's only painting in the U.S. My group started out in the National Air and Space Museum. Next, we walked through the Smithsonian Castle to the National Museum of African Art, Museum of Natural History, and the Museum of American History. I most enjoyed seeing the original ruby slippers from The Wizard of Oz and seeing the large model animals. Next up was our night tour of D.C. I got a picture at the White House, and it was way smaller than I thought it would be. We also saw the World War II, Vietnam, Korean, and Lincoln Memorials. At the Korean Memorial, I was amazed at how the faces were so realistic and how you could see every emotion in them. The next day, we made the trip to the Hart Senate Office Building and listened to an educational session titled, A Visit to the Hill. This was a very interesting session in that we were able to learn about the lives of some individuals that worked at Capitol Hill and some of the background information that isn't known by the outsider. At our visit to the Capitol, we saw beautiful paintings, some of which I had saw in my history books. But the real thing, and sculptures of many Kansas people too. We also saw the spot where Abraham Lincoln sat as a representative from Illinois. The Library of Congress was one of the most beautiful buildings of the entire trip. Tuesday, our final day of true touring, began with a trip to the U.S. Federal Communications Commission. We listened to many speakers, each detailing a different aspect of the telecommunications industry and some politics behind it. We even had the chance to listen to and take a picture with Ajit Pai, the chairman, originally from Kansas. Next, we hopped on the bus and traveled to the museum, 
a fascinating and informational place telling us all about the media and its involvement in American and world history. At the museum, we saw a piece of the Berlin Wall, the 9-11 memorabilia, and so much more. Then we traveled to Mount Vernon, the home of George Washington. It was really cool and had a beautiful view of the water. And we watched a 4D movie in a small theater that snowed and shook our seats. The FRS Youth Tour is an experience that I will surely never forget. I cannot thank enough the people who made it possible for me to go. I experienced America in a way that I never have before in the nation's capital. This experience of visiting our nation's capital went beyond all measures of my expectations. And I cannot give enough gratitude for not only providing this opportunity to you, but for selecting me to go on Next Tech's behalf. I hope that you are able to continue providing this opportunity to youth as I can now advocate for the impact on youth today and for the future of telecommunication companies tomorrow. So I, I hope you enjoyed that video from Reagan and, and Haley, and uh, you can see how exciting the, the trip was for them. Unfortunately, we were prepared to send two students to the uh, 2020 FRS Youth Tour, but due to the circumstances that we've already been talking about with the pandemic, it was canceled. So the board has decided uh, for 2021 that three students will be able to go because the two students that were selected for this year are also eligible again next year. So we will have three of our students going next year. The, um, the next segue, as you see on your screen, is, is something, um, go back to the, the one right before, um, is, is something that's, that's really important to us. You know, our culture is, is something that I think makes a difference with how we take care of our customers, how we take care of each other, how we support each other. And, you know, we have a great team, uh, highly skilled, highly sought after professionals in, in all aspects of our business. You know, we're, we're looking for constant growth, but the, the thing about that is we're trying to make sure that we do it right. Because at the end of the day, if you grow faster than, than your capabilities are, that starts having stresses and, and morale issues with your team. Um, but why is, why is growth important? You know, as, as you uh, take a look at um, the services that we provide in a high cost rural area, you know, the support mechanisms that for many years have allowed us to do that have continued to be compressed. The fact that, that Next Tech Rural Telephone Service Company has diversified as we have, it allows us to bring in revenues that are, are going away in support and allows us to continue providing services into the future for our cooperative members, which is why we're here. And so we continue looking for opportunities to grow and expand that will allow us to continue taking care of, of that cooperative. The, uh, the next, this slide shows, you know, something that if you're ever in our offices and walking around, you will see this uh, display on, on desks, on the wall, and, and it really focuses on the, the elements of, of what our core values are. And, and we call it the next tech way. So, you know, this is something that, you know, was put together initially by our culture club, uh, culture committee, culture club. Um, and through that, you know, it really defined who we are and, and what's important. And I, I hope that, you know, as you have an opportunity to be in some of our offices, you see this and, and that what we do and how we represent the company is reflected by the next way. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the highlights uh, from 2019. If we can move and, um, you know, fiber growth in our fiber infrastructure has, has continued to be a focal point. Uh, in our cooperative footprint uh, in Victoria, uh, we completed an additional uh, 61 miles of fiber, 123 drops and completed um, that exchange. In Galatia, we uh, started the fiber build out in 2019. Uh, we actually put 49 and three quarters miles of fiber in, as well as 52 drops. And in Joaquin, some of the rural areas of the Joaquin Exchange, uh, we continue to deploy fiber, getting another 30 miles in with uh, an additional 30 drops. Um, 
And we also have continued to expand fiber in, in some of our competitive uh, communities outside the cooperative, Salina and Great Bend. Uh, we have continued to deploy fiber in areas uh, where our, we were meeting business needs uh, for our customers. And our core network, if, if you think about the core network, um, if you think about all the exchanges that are part of our cooperative and, and our competitive service area. So it's a network that connects all of what used to be called the central offices uh, when it's specifically telcos. But it, all of those offices are now nodes on our core network. And so as we continue to see growth in capacity, we were able to um, address proactively the need to increase the capability on that core network. And um, so that's something that, you know, our NetOps team is constantly looking at trending, seeing where are we gonna be in the next year, next two years, so we can start a plan, and that's, that's what we've continued with that 100 gig upgrade. Thinking about our technology services uh, group, uh, they've implemented Office 365 for internal usage here at NextTech, which is a, a cloud-based service. Um, you, know, you know, like anything, uh, implementing something new takes a little bit of getting used to, but it, it's it's gone really well, and it's been something that I think has helped us be even more productive. Implemented multi-factor authentication, which provides an extra layer of security um, for our internal systems here at NextTech. We launched four new cybersecurity products. And with that, you know, cybersecurity is something that I don't know about you, but for me, it's, it's a scary situation because you've got folks who are continually trying to find ways to steal data, steal information. And our team goes above and beyond to try and stay ahead of that as much as possible, protect our information, our customers' information, and, and mitigate problems that come along with the, the, the hackers that are out there in the cyber world. And, um, and we will continue to keep that as a focus because I think that all of our small, mid-sized, and even our large business customers need assistance with providing that protection. Thinking about our carrier services group, uh, we brought uh, Seth Ritter to the carrier team and with that allows us to continue uh, solidifying the relationships that we have with our current customers as far as, and, and as well as reach new customers. Um, we've added new wireless backhaul uh, agreements to services that we've been providing. We added new uh, customers to our NOC, which is the Network Operations Center. They monitor and watch those uh, customers' networks to see if there are any issues, proactively, you know, provide feedback to them so that they can protect their network and their customers. And uh, we've added new CREA customers, and that's uh, Communications Act for Law, uh, Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. And if you think about the old days where you hear about the FBI and you hear about wiretaps, well, you know, today things are data. And our team has the skill set and the tools to help other service providers uh, be able to meet those requirements uh, with the, the federal government. So those, that's something that we continue to see growth in. On the ad solution side, you know, this is our media and our marketing group. And uh, we've seen in, in 2019, uh, website development uh, was extremely successful. Um, and, and that alone exceeded our projections significantly. Uh, we reorganized uh, that group um, to allow for, for better workflow and, and becoming a little bit more efficient to allow for, for greater uh, growth opportunities. So, you know, that, that went very smoothly. One of the uh, big things uh, last fall was the acquisition of a company called Cordell. Um, Cordell is based, uh, is based in California. And uh, for many years, we had an ongoing working relationship with Cordell. Uh, we used their network monitoring tools in our network operations center. And so for over a decade, we had uh, worked closely with Cordell. Um, timing was, was right. Um, uh, 
Bill and Carol Matthews, uh, the owners of Cordell, um, decided that they had a, a timeline on when they wanted to retire. Uh, we had such a great working relationship. We were able to work with, uh, with Bill and Carol, and um, it turned out that it was just a right fit. Their culture aligned with our culture. We had similar values. Um, and, and bringing the Cordell group into the next set family was, was really, um, although any time you're, you're doing that, there, there are things that you have to address, changes that take place, it went extremely smoothly. And I think a lot of that is just the, the people that were part of that team that become part of our team, as, as well as the fact that we have aligned cultures. And, and you know, as I was talking earlier, we look for opportunities to grow. But it, it needs to be the right fit. And, and this was a, a great example of the right fit and the right time. You know, with Cordell becoming part of the, the next tech team, we've we've got opportunities for some new services that I think um, will allow us to help other service providers be better. And uh, you know, one thing specific is a focus on a cloud-based architecture for the network operations center that allows the ability for our peers or other broadband providers to um, have the ability to see their network better than they ever have before. And through the, the melding of the, the experts <coughs> and professionals that we have here at Next Tech with the team from Cordell, we're able to put that in play. And because we're so far in to 2020, you know, I can tell you that that team has worked really well on putting the basics together for this and come uh, the beginning of 2021, that product will be available for our customers and potential customers. The other thing I really wanted to share with you, which was another big step in, in our cooperative, was the membership evolution. You know, when cooperative was founded, uh, telephone service was the primary means for communication. And so being a member of the cooperative was based on having uh, landline telephone service. Um, as, as you know, and as the trends have shown nationally, um, folks have, have disconnected uh, their landlines for one reason or another. And many reasons, they, they have a mobile phone and they are watching their budget. And, and as a result of that, they have, have there's been an unprecedented uh, reduction in, in landlines. However, broadband has continued to be a, a growing uh, service for communication. And when the board has looked at um, this in the past, they, they scrutinized, you know, where do we see the revenues coming in to support the cooperative? And how does that fit with the, the requirements of membership? And just like we were talking, timing was right with Cordell, timing was right for this. And so, you know, we um, implemented the, the change last year and so that come January 1, um, folks that had broadband service as well as telephone service in our cooperative footprint were all now members of the World Telephone Service Company Cooperative. So that was pretty exciting. We actually saw our uh, membership more than double overnight uh, when that was implemented. The next slide kind of shows the, the trends that I kind of described just now. You know, when you when you look at most of these lines, uh, they uh, have have gone down over the years. You know, whether it's a uh, rural landline, um, which is a cooperative service area, next set landline lines, which is uh, service <coughs> outside of the cooperative, um, and, or video. All of those have have shown a, a decreasing uh, trend. But if you look at that green line up at the top, that's our broadband customers, our internet service customers. And that has continued to grow. And so 
You know, this just provides a, a good uh, visual of our core services. The next uh, graph shows the usage of that broadband service. So if you if you look at the, the colors, they, they change every year. You know, going back in 2014, a majority of our customers had broadband service at 10 mag or below. You go forward to midpoint of this year, and a majority of our customers have 50 meg broadband or higher. And because of providing fiber to the premise uh, in our in, in most of our cooperative, not, not all, we are almost there. We've got a few more years and we will get everybody with fiber to the prim. And we're marching on steadily with that. But in, in the areas where we have fiber, our customers can get gigabit broadband service. And, and that's exciting. And you can see just with this graph how much more uh, folks depend on a higher speed broadband package. The next slide, you know, these are, if, if you're a data geek like me, this is, this is when it gets kind of fun. And you start looking at these trends. And so, again, going back to 2014, this is the amount of data that goes across our network. Um, in, in, a, in, in the year. And so, I'm sorry, in the month. Um, and this is specifically March for each of these years. So in 2014, we had 781 terabytes of, of downloaded data go across our network. Okay, so you're, you're probably saying, what's a terabyte? Well, a terabyte is a million megabytes. Okay, well, you see that in 2015, it went to 1,419 of those terabytes. Now we've crossed into petabyte uh, territory. Okay, so petabytes are a million gigabytes. You know, gigabytes are 1,000 megabytes. So, I mean, just the, the growth in data uh, usage <coughs> across our network. And, and quite honestly, you know, transition to the next, you know, what we're seeing uh, with this kind of growth relates back to that core network upgrade that we were talking about. Um, but here, this graph shows you peak usage. Um, again, looking at you know, a particular month um, and saying, okay, what is the, the most data growing, going across our network at any given second? Okay, and you see that we have 66 gig going across our network at any given second at a peak. Well, if we hadn't made that upgrade to our core network to 100 gig capability, you would see network congestion. You would see the inability for, for data to move um, as it should. That starts having a negative impact on anything going across that network. So, you know, the fact that we implemented that project and we're ahead of the issues um, is, is why we make those continued investments. So we can continue providing the best possible service to our, our customers and our members. Um, one of the other things that, um, you know, we have been involved in is, is uh, legislation for um, what we call, what is called the, the Rural Broadband Network Enhancement Act. And with that, we're trying to bring awareness to the folks in Congress that you have the overtop video providers, which really are the primary causers for what you've seen with uh, these past two graphs, um, that they they are not contributing, I can go back one, um, they, they don't contribute to uh, the, the cost of using that network. And so we're just saying in high cost rural areas, these folks who are the primary causers of, of the expense that we incur, we, we think they should help in, in covering some of those costs. Um, the FCC, there's a potential FCC study bill that's also going to be uh, taken into consideration based off of this legislation. And so, you know, we are out there representing, you know, what is important for allowing us to continue providing services to our customers, but helping the folks in Washington, D.C. and Topeka understand the demands that certain you know, elements have on our network. So looking forward, now, now we're on this, uh, the looking forward. This is, um, again, 
when it's April. Uh, a lot of this looking forward was prospective. Um, now that we're already into September, we've already gotten well underway on some of this looking forward that I want to share with you. But this year, our goal was to spend $6.9 million in the cooperative service area. And when you look at, you know, building a fiber optic network, it, it is expensive. It's, it's not a cheap thing uh, to, to put, it, put it in the ground so that it's most protected and to do it right. You know, it requires millions of dollars to continue expanding that network to reach our customers and our members. In our cooperative footprint, we focus on, on two areas, finishing up the Galatia Exchange, which was started in 2019. And with that, there were 26.7 miles to go, 35 drops. We have already finished that. So even though this was looking forward back in April, we have already finished that. And we have been ahead of schedule in the Joaquin uh, rural areas. Um, the goal was 160 miles, 178 drops this year. We will actually exceed that. I don't know exactly how much, but you know, the goal was to continue uh, deploying fiber as, as, as quickly as we can to our members. And the competitive uh, footprint in Great Bend, uh, we started building residential fiber in the, the Bissell Point area. And uh, at this point, we've, we've already completed the construction and we're finishing up the cutovers. We're looking at a second residential area that uh, has already begun the staking process, which is when we have our engineers go out there and start, you know, basically feet on the ground, starting to plot out how that fiber is going to be deployed in that neighborhood. And in Salina, we uh, continue extending fiber whenever we have business uh, requirements or business uh, requests to allow us uh, to, to grow that fiber network off of our core backbone. Looking at our technology services group, um, you know, I talked a lot about cybersecurity, you know, when we were looking at last year, but, you know, cybersecurity is one of those things that on a going forward basis is going to be a priority. Um, so continuing to, you know, grow that part of our business. Um, we implemented a new position, the director of technology, um, as, as we have grown that part of our business significantly in, in recent years, it only made sense that, that we had someone whose sole focus was watching over that part of our business. And he reports directly to my colleague, our, our chief operations officer. And uh, we continue looking at new ways to provide services better. Our surveillance, security, access control services, that, that technology services, and some of our field ops technicians have been uh, um, out deploying. We looked at uh, ways to improve that through the cloud-based system, which I think um, will simplify and improve uh, the customer uh, satisfaction with those products going forward. Looking at our carrier services group, um, as I talked about with Cordell, integrating that group into our group and providing new tools for network monitoring, uh, voice quality measurements, things like that are things that this group has been focused on uh, as a way to grow carrier services. Add solutions, the media and marketing group continues to evolve in how they, they meet, uh, and meet the needs of and serve our customers through multimedia uh, marketing uh, capabilities. This next slide shows just a, a, a snapshot of the footprint of where we serve. If you, if you look at this, the areas that are red um, are showing the exchanges that are built out with fiber to the print. Um, you will also see some, some red triangles and red circles. If it's a red triangle, that means that that city that the triangle is over is partially built out with fiber. If it's a circle uh, or a red circle, then that entire city has been built out already. If it shows yellow, then that's that's where we provide fixed wireless service. And in recent months, we've uh, been implementing uh, some upgrades to that fixed wireless equipment. 
for many years, uh, 3.65 megahertz was the primary spectrum we used with our fixed wireless product. Uh, the FCC has required that we abandon that spectrum here in mid-October. And with that, we've been moving folks over to new equipment with new spec on new spectrum. And we participated in some spectrum options so that we have additional spectrum for fixed wireless purposes. But that's the yellow areas that you can see reflected in here. And the gray areas are still the copper areas that are continuing to be transitioned over to fiber and are cooperative with them. The next map um, is, is when you look at this, you're like, holy mackerel, this is the US. Well, next tech through our growth and carrier services, when you when you look at the Kalia, the NOC services that we provide, the uh, ad solution services that we provide, the Cordell services that we provide, we have customers across the United States. And, and you know, prior to Cordell, I would say through our, our Kalia services, we, we provide a service to customers from Alaska to Puerto Rico. And now with Cordell as a part of Next Tech, that, you know, um, the customers across the U.S. has, has grown significantly. The next map just shows that, you know, in addition to the U.S., we, we've got customers in the Caribbean. And then the, the other shows that we have customers in the Pacific, the, the next map. And so, you know, whether it's Hawaii or Micronesia, um, we have uh, customers internationally. So again, the whole focus for continuing to grow all of these services and expand where we reach customers and provide these services so that we can continue to provide excellent, awesome services to our cooperative members. So Ms. Phyllis, that concludes my report. Well, thank you, Jimmy. It's always exciting to hear your report and, and to hear how things have changed so much in just a year's time from when we met last. So at this time, we're going to close our poll for the director election and the bylaw revision. So if you have not um, cast your vote, please do so now. We're going to wait 15 seconds um, just so anybody can finish their vote. We've talked about how long 15 seconds is when you're sitting here in front of the team. <laughs> and 15 seconds seems like a long time. It does. So for the um, for the director's election for Kirk Johnson, the results are 63 to zero in the affirmative. And for Ron Rogers, they're also 63 to 0 in the company. Congratulations, gentlemen. For the bylaws revision, the results are 63 in the affirmative and 2 negative. So therefore, the motion carries to approve of the by bylaws amendments. Next, we will address any unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business to come before the meeting? If so, please type that in the chat. We'll wait now 30 seconds um, for anybody to address any unfinished business. And if we thought 15 seconds was long, 30 seconds will be even longer. This is where we needed the chip. <laughs> We've had no chats for any unfinished business, therefore we're going to move on to new business. Is there any new business to come before the meeting? If so, once again, please type those in the chat function. And again, we'll wait 30 seconds for that.
Seeing nothing in the chat, we will move on to what we know that you all have been waiting for, which is the door prizes. We will have a random drawing of those attending the meeting and announce the winners in the chat. For those of you who are attending physically, um, we have added your names to the drawing as well. After the meeting, those winners will be contacted by staff members to make arrangements to um, deliver your prizes. Kevin Koenigsman is in the studio with us and he will be drawing for the door prizes. Congratulations, everybody, for um, winning those door prizes. Anyway, that concludes our door prizes. Congratulations again to all those winners. Um, as I stated before, staff will be um, contacting you after the meeting to make arrangements to pick those door prizes up. So that concludes our 2020 Grill Telephone Annual Meeting. So I'm going to state that the 2020 Annual Meeting of the members will now adjourn. Thank you all for attending.